Okay, this ran last night. Check this out. This is the cover for the S500, and that's exactly how it comes off the bed. This uh, AnyCubic i3 Ultra Base. Nothing sticks, you don't need adhesive. It just has this textured glass, and this has been going several years, but look at the quality of the print off of this. This is, the, with the settings, I'm still running an ancient Kira release, uh, 2.6 I believe, it's in my GitHub repo, and these are the settings I've tuned for this i3. And notice, like, this is straight off the printer. No stringing, no nothing, just wonderful layers and super, I made this, this is nice and thin, as light as it can be. Um, it's still pretty heavy though. But this will be, hopefully, if it fits, this will be the cover for our X500 ST that I'm building, the Sky Tractor. That'll be our heavy lift quadcopter. But man, oh man, just love how these prints come out. Pretty happy with that. And uh, we'll make some decals there on the, uh, on the Cricut and uh, label this up. If it fits, I don't know. It's a Thingiverse model, so I don't know. It's in my GitHub as well. Hopefully that fits. And this is the quadcopter itself and where we're at with this. Um, Got to start putting this together and finish it off. It's been on the list for <laughs> like two years now. All the components are sitting here ready to go. And hopefully we can live stream this. Um, Got the streaming rig. The new streaming PC is working. So uh, I'll go back to live streaming this some more. I don't think I... I don't think I streamed when I put these motors on. I think I was just testing it out, but hopefully this will actually here. We can check right now. Let's see. Does it fit? This is the top plate and with any luck. Yeah, it sure looks like it. You look approximately the right angles to fit and this will set right over top and cover up all our electronics and make something pretty cool. This arrived last night. I don't know when the video will go up, but I'm super excited about this. This is the RG351P um, retro gaming solution. This is a full emulator set up in a handheld, and man, oh man, do I love this. I'm gonna swap out the um, firmware for a new firmware. I'm just gonna make a new SD card. I've got it all set, but check this out. Nintendo DS, all the major, um, game systems and this is the way it came turbo graphics 16 pc engine nintendo yeah game boy everything super nintendo n64 everything super super cool um i'm really excited to get playing with this and i already love it um i'm not a big gamer but this this is just so cool so uh, I'm going to make another SD card. I'll keep the original one the way it is. And I got a bunch of ROMs with it. That's the games, if you're not familiar. The file format is, uh, used to be ROM, like read-only memory. But um, I have a lot of ROMs, and you can download them from whatever sources you desire. Um, well, you can just go to Pirate Bay. It is what it is, and you can download them. Not that I'm advocating that, but uh, this is the this is the rig. Got some 3D printer nozzles. Um, that i3 that I just showed you, my favorite printer of all time, I actually finally had to change a nozzle in it. After how many years have I had that thing? I've never changed a nozzle. I've never clogged a nozzle, but I baked one because I ran it without the filament center, sensor and I ran a big print with um, very little PLA left. And I ran out of filament and I cooked one. And I could probably clean it out, but I have a spare that I keep in the box here. I have a whole a whole box of 3D printer goodies and uh, I have spares in there that I've never needed. So um, while I was doing that, I figured, well, I might as well replace them and now I have enough to last me four lifetimes. If you've been watching my videos a while, you've seen PCB Way. They sponsor a lot of the videos on this channel and they are who I have make all of my PCBs that I design. And they truly support makers, but check this out. They're still running this fourth annual design contest. You should go over there and submit a project. If you have anything that is a project, a PCB design project, 
If you submit it here, you can win $1,500 cash, $1,000 cash, $500 cash. Uh, it's by makers, for makers. Check out these judges, Mitch Altman. Like This is just cool stuff, but it gets better. Click the view more and look at the submissions here. These are the submissions. There are four pages and four pages only here of submissions. So your odds of winning over $1,000 are pretty darn high. So if you have a cool project and you'd like to submit it, well, slide over to PCBWay.com. Uh, throw it in, throw your name in the hat, see if you can win some money. If nothing else, you're sharing your cool project with the world. Uh, PCBWay does really support makers, and I stand behind them. They've been really good to me. They've been good to other people, and I like what they do. So that's why you see them here on the channel. But this is a PSA, guys. Uh, really cool projects and some serious money. Okay, this is so good. I got to share. I went ahead and did the firmware upgrade on this thing, and... This is the coolest device I have ever owned. This is worth every penny they charge for these. So I put Arc OS on this. Um, it's a freely available firmware on GitHub. And check this out, just this feature alone. Press the select button and it scrolls through all of the, the ROMs that I have and the uh, video accompanying them. I went ahead and scraped the videos and the album art but you can cursor through and then you can start on any one of them. So I have a, I have a lot of ROMs on here and you can get a, a preview of the different games. Here's Darkwing Duck. This, this is just so awesome. Uh, I, uh, I, I love this. So if we hit select again, maybe. Uh, how do you get back out? B maybe. Ah, back out. And you can do videos. Where's that gone? These are all the different game systems that I have on here now. And it can even play. Come on. Where is it? So many, so many videos. Check this out. I put. I went ahead and put uh, Burt Rattan. A uh, little documentary in Red Planet and stuff on there. And can we play Red Planet? That's so cool. I am just tickled with this thing. What a neat device. And there we go. There's Red Planet. So um, they advise you to keep the video small. This is an old, like, basically 480 rip. So, yeah, this is, like, I don't know whether I'm going to do a video on this thing. Um, or how I would do it. There's so many videos out there. I'll post a, a link down below to, to this unit itself. But if you're in the market for retro gaming, just go ahead. <laughs> this thing's awesome. <laughs> so this is the corner that we'll see if we can fix up my crazy, neglected mess of networking and DNS server and the UPS that I fixed in a previous video. And basically, I'm going to try and give this a little bit of a makeover on a budget. We're going to try hooking up a new mesh network. Uh, we'll stay with the same uh, original router for now. Um, new DNS setup, home assistant setup, and then we'll use the Raspberry Pi that the DNS server is running on to do a dashboard for Home Assistant. And between all of the above, we should be able to make this corner into something kind of cool. I think it's gonna be fun. Well, it will fit. All right, this is basically a rough draft of where things will be. And I just have to add my DNS server. I have my Home Assistant Raspberry Pi here. And I'll set my DNS server and a Pi Hole Raspberry Pi here, which is up there, and set that up as my Home Assistant uh, display for this room, which will be pretty darn cool. Everything is on this UPS. In a previous video, you saw me fix this. Uh, we did new batteries in that because the old ones had split and were completely uh, evaporated and empty. TP-Link mesh Wi-Fi, uh, Wi-Fi 6 is running and we just have to add an uh, Ethernet switch now as well because I'm out of ports and we need to add my network attached storage, my NAS right here as well. It's coming along. Getting closer. Switch. 
network attached storage, dual drive, uh, I think that's 12 terabytes, so six in RAID, and the Raspberry Pi for the Home Assistant. Pretty cool, I like it. Now my Roomba won't run over things and get all caught up or turn my network off anymore. Not the optimal place for Wi-Fi, but uh, that's fine. It's a, a mesh with huge coverage for this, uh, this small area, so it should be fine. Forgot to show this is complete. There's my home assistant running, front door camera. I have the cameras dumbed down on this server because, uh, well, bandwidth on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and this is running my DNS server. My Roomba's cleaning. If you guys are interested in home assistant, I'll do some videos on it. This, uh, I love my home automation. This is so freaking cool. I am so happy with it. It just works. I have weather forecast, wind, you name it. Speed test, network monitoring, constant. Everything I want on one page is super cool. And then I have a bigger dashboard for the uh, larger PCs instead of the Pi. Ah, I, I should have done this years ago. Oh man, what a mess. I have so much work to do out here, but I need to get moving over to the camp. It's fall where I can cut some wood. So I'm going to get this saw ready and take it over. Uh, I think I'll just do all this on the Make Me Outdoors channel though. So if you're not subscribed, check it out over there. So I came up to the camp to uh, get the trailer first step of the way to winterized. And this is what I'm greeted with. Isn't this something? I'm so lucky. This is this is incredible. What a beautiful night. And I'm just soaking up the rays. Not bad for October. <laughs> this is just this is the way. And uh yeah, I'll get some things done. Tomorrow I'll get more stuff packed up, take a trailer load home, and uh next weekend I'll move move the camper. I got a fifth wheel put in the back of the wife's truck this week. Um, as I didn't have a way to move the trailer and uh, I should be able to move it no problem now because this is a floodplain this river floods and in fact it actually flooded this week all the way up to the camp almost all the way to the fire pit and you can see down there in my kayaking videos that tree that was on the corner on the bend up there is now in the middle of the river about 50 meters closer to me so this is crazy they had a pretty wicked flash flood all the grass on the far side is flattened down and everything all the way to the field so it's pretty crazy it's coyotes yipping and a, a farm dog must have chased them into the bush over there they stopped now but i'm sure they'll be up in tonight and that's incredible what a view i hope uh Nothing else, you get to enjoy it with me for a moment. This is just, look at this. I am so lucky. What a spot. And I didn't have to cut the grass. How nice. I'm gonna get some stuff done, but for now, I think I'll just sit here until the sun goes down. I have no idea how I'm going to edit this vlog together or whether this will be vlog or what, but finally taking the time to start assembling this 3018 CNC machine. Um, yeah, it's only been like a year. Check this out. This is something like immensely satisfying about this kit. <laughs> All the aluminum extrusion comes 
with this cool plastic coating pre-covered in aluminum chips too, but it's not making too much of a mess. I think I'll be all right on the bench. But this is the bottom plate, I do believe, and we should be able to, but I, I think I'm just gonna go live and stream this on the Make Me TV channel because I think that'd be kind of fun to hang out with you guys and assemble this thing. And then I, I can do what I did with a, a recent video. I was able to use the, the live recording from the Make Me TV replay to use as B-roll in the video. Cause there's a million and one of these, um, these 3018 videos out there. So I really don't think I need to make another one other than uh, just putting it to use in some projects. And, uh, I don't know, like a little bit of B-roll will be good for the videos, but I got all my end mills are here. The page, all, all you patrons have seen these in my mailbag videos, but cool little, cool little bits and a um, Z-stop um, bed level finder thing for the Z offset. And then the hold downs for the waste board. Actually, hold downs for the work, and I actually got a whole waste board, uh, an MDF waste board for it. So it was actually quite cheap on Amazon. But I'll, I'll show that when we assemble it. Uh, yeah, I think I'll stream this. It'd be fun. So join me over on the Make Me TV channel, and uh, we'll hang out. We'll build something. Let's build a CNC machine. Make sure you stop by the Discord link below. Uh, this is our community chat where you can join me and others to chat 24 seven about any of the topics here we do on the channel. Lots of cool people, fun place to hang out and say hi on the weekends and just some really cool people. So drop on in. Also, make sure you check out my uh, link below to the merch. Uh, I actually added some new merch in this store that you might be interested in. I have some t-shirts and stuff and some of it's pretty fun. Uh, check it out if uh, you want to grab one. Well, it sure helps the channel and helps pay for some of these projects and keep the videos flowing. Cheers, guys.